entered the New York art world in the early 1980s with site-specific sculpture. They used metal organically rather than geometrically, and by drawing in space with flowing lines and forms, I was able to create an implicitly feminine voice in welded steel. Many of the pieces I made were from bribing the site managers of the destroyed West Side Highway. I mean, it was quite a scene. I would drive up every morning wearing a bikini, overalls, and very high-heeled boots with cases of Jack Daniels and boxes and boxes of good Cuban cigars. I convinced the construction workers to leave aside all the good steel that I wanted, then got a flatbed truck, and they hoisted all the rebar onto the truck for me, and it was driven out to the sites where I welded the sculptures. I love this studio. I've been here for 35 years. And for the last 10 years, I've been really fighting tooth and nail to keep it with landmark cases at the loft board and winning. I mean, really, they're building 70 story condos all along the waterfront and obviously they want me out. I've been able to make such huge work here with the 20 foot ceilings and the hoists going out into the alleyway. It's my home, and I'm gonna die here with those damn high-heeled boots on. One of my most recent series is Trophies of Abuse. It started as a meditation on gentrification, but then Trump was elected, and the narrative took a much darker turn. The necklace has eight glass cameos of world leaders that are capable of either saving or destroying our planet. While I was living in Germany on a Fulbright, I became completely obsessed with visiting as many concentration camps as I could. God knows why. The cleansing is a trio of three concrete and steel sculptures reflecting my architectonic memories of visiting the camps. My Fulbright was to Emden, Germany, the town of my paternal ancestors, to research a Holocaust memorial. The reclaimed site is a monumental recreation of the Emden Synagogue, destroyed on Kristallnacht, juxtaposed against a World War II concrete bunker. Since I really was trying desperately to get my memorial built, I was being a very, very good girl while living amongst the townspeople and teaching at the local university. I therefore suppressed all the feelings of anger and rage that I had, and when I got back to my Brooklyn studio, they erupted into the Hitler vitrines. This is a series deconstructing Hitler's psychosexual profile with cast crystal objects. Each element represents a separate dimension of his very complicated personality and its subsequent infusion into the philosophy of the Third Reich. In so many ways, I'm a conceptual artist who makes objects. Every piece I make is a resolution of a confrontation between what I mean to say and the choice of medium to make it. I'm forced to work with so many materials in order to distill the narrative. Dead Mother, Dead Cowboy features effigies of my recently deceased mother and ex-partner. Not dead, but dead to me as archetypal stereotypes faced off in a Freudian tableau. When the cowboy rode off on his motorcycle into the sunset, I was left with his cherished motorcycle uniform, gloves, boots, etc. And when my mother died, I inherited her residual wardrobe, her Hermes crocodile handbag, Ferragamo pumps, 500 pairs of gloves that I cast my hands in, and all of her minks, the whole kit and caboodle. Another result of gentrification was Upper East Siders forcing out all the pedophiles in their neighborhood. So, of course, the city moved them two blocks away from me. Began to research pedophilia and soon discovered Elsa Gate. The controversial YouTube videos targeting children with Disney characters in sexually explicit scenarios. My Elsa Gate is a series of 23 cast glass pot de verre sculptures made of deconstructed children's toys. 
While I was living in Detroit, it was very sad, and I drove through burned-out neighborhoods looking like vestiges of war. Detroit Redoux conflated the dissolution of Motor City with the deterioration of my own aging body. To fly, to drive, is a portrait of my beloved dog Bingo dragging a 1997 V8 Lincoln engine. If my work started with the natural landscape, and grew to contain both personal and political concerns. These three narratives organically evolved to form my personal language of sculpture. And if the work is now considered feminist, it also represents my 40-year journey through the world of formalist sculpture within which I was trained to find my own voice. <laughs>